Hello everyone, and welcome back to Wiki Whisperer, Articles Aloud. My name is Adrian Curl, and I will be your host. Now this is a show where I select a Wikipedia article at random, or by request, and I read it in its entirety. Now to keep with the spirit of authenticity, as if I was truly reading to you, I have decided to do this show in one take. No cuts, no edits. That means all stutters, misspoken words, and errors will be kept in, which I apologize for in advance. Before I begin, I would like to apologize for my absence these past two weeks. I have had a lot of stuff going on school and family-wise, but I will be back now trying to continue that one episode a week schedule. That being said, today's article is about Mr. Tambourine Man. Let's begin. Mr. Tambourine Man is a song written by Bob Dylan, released as the first track of the acoustic side of his March 1965 album, Bringing It All Back Home. The song's popularity led to Dylan recording it live many times, and it has been included in multiple compilation albums. It has been translated into other languages and has been used or referenced in television shows, films, and books. The song has been performed and recorded by many artists, including The Birds, Judy Collins, Melanie, Odetta, and Stevie Wonder, among others. The Birds' version was released in April 1965 as their first single on Columbia Records, reaching number one on both the Billboard Hot 100 chart and the UK Singles chart, as well as being the title track of their debut album, Mr. Tambourine Man. The Birds' recording of the song was influential in popularizing the musical subgenres of folk rock and jangle pop, leading many contemporary bands to mimic its fusion of jangly guitars and intellectual lyrics in the wake of the single's success. Dylan himself was partly influenced to record with electric instrumentation after hearing The Birds' reworking of the song. Dylan's song has four verses, of which the birds only used the second for the recording. Dylan's and the birds' versions have appeared on various lists, ranking the greatest songs of all time, including an appearance by both on Rolling Stone's list of the 500 best songs ever. Both versions received Grammy Hall of Fame awards. The song has a bright, expansive melody, and has become famous for its surrealistic imagery influenced by artists as diverse as French poet Arthur Rimbaud and Italian filmmaker Federico Fellini. The lyrics call on the title character to play a song, and the narrator will follow. Interpretations of the lyrics have included a paean to drugs, such as LSD, a call to the singer's muse, a reflection of the audience's demands of the singer, and religious interpretations. Composition Mr. Tambourine Man was written and composed in early 1964, at the same approximate time as Chimes of Freedom, which Dylan recorded later that spring for his album, Another Side of Bob Dylan. Dylan began writing and composing Mr. Tambourine Man in February 1964, after attending Mardi Gras in New Orleans during a cross-country road trip with several friends, and completed it sometime between the middle of March and late April of that year after he had returned to New York. Nigel Williamson has suggested in The Rough Guide to Bob Dylan that the influence of Mardi Gras can be heard in the swirling and fanciful imagery of the song's lyrics. Journalist Al Aronowitz has stated that Dylan completed the song at his home, but folk singer Judy Collins, who later recorded the song, has stated that Dylan completed the song at her home. Dylan premiered the song the following month at a May 17th concert at London's Royal Festival Hall. Recording. During the sessions for Another Side of Bob Dylan, in June 1964, with Tom Wilson producing, Dylan recorded Mr. Tambourine Man with Ramblin' Jack Elliott singing harmony. As Elliott was slightly off key, that recording was not used. Later that month, he recorded a publisher demo of the song at Whitmark Music. More than six months passed before Dylan re recorded the song again with Wilson in the producer's chair, during the final Bringing It All Back Home session on January 15, 1965, the same day that Gates of Eden, It's Alright Ma, I'm Only Bleeding, and It's All Over Now, Baby Blue 
were recorded. It was long thought that the four songs were each recorded in one long take. However, in the biography Bob Dylan Behind the Shades, Clinton Highland relates that the song required six attempts, possibly because of difficulties in working out the playoffs between Dylan's acoustic guitar and Bruce Leghorn's electric lead. Alternate takes released on Dylan's Cutting Edge collection also reveal that early takes include drummer Bobby Gregg playing a tambourine-heavy 2-4 rhythm, but Dylan found this too distracting and opted to continue recording with Langhorn alone. The final take was selected for the album, which was released on March 22, 1965. In his book, Keys to the Rain, the definitive Bob Dylan encyclopedia, Oliver Trager describes Mr. Tambourine Man as having a bright, expansive melody, with Langhorne's electric guitar accompaniment, which provides a counter melody to the vocals, being the only instrumentation besides Dylan's acoustic guitar and harmonica. Author Wilfred Mellers has written that although the song is in the key of D major, it is harmonized as if it were in a Lydian G major, giving the song a tonal ambiguity that enhances the dreamy quality of the melody. Unusually, rather than beginning with the first verse, the song begins with an iteration of the chorus. Quote, Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. I'm not sleepy, and there is no place I'm going to. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. In the jingle jangle morning, I'll come following you. End quote. Interpretations William Rollman, writing for the All Music website, has suggested the following outline of the song's lyrics. Quote, the time seems to be early morning following a night when the narrator has not slept. Still unable to sleep, though amazed by his weariness, he is available and open to Mr. Tambourine Man's song and says he will follow him. In the course of four verses, studded with internal rhymes, he expounds on this situation his meaning often heavily embroidered with imagery, though the desire to be freed by the tambourine man's song remains clear." End quote. While there has been speculation that the song is about drugs, particularly with lines such as, quote, take me on a trip upon your magic swirling ship, end quote, and, quote, the smoke rings of my mind, end quote, Dylan has denied the song is about drugs. Though he was smoking marijuana at the time the song was written, Dylan was not introduced to LSD until a few months later. Outside of drug speculation, the song has been interpreted as a call to the singer's spirit or muse, or as a search for transcendence. In particular, biographer John Hinchy has suggested in his book, Like a Complete Unknown, that the singer is praying to his muse for inspiration. Hinchy notes that ironically the song itself is evidence the muse has already provided the sought-after inspiration. The figure of Mr. Tambourine Man has sometimes been interpreted as a symbol for Jesus or the Pied Piper of Hamelin. The song may also reference gospel music themes, with Mr. Tambourine Man being the bringer of religious salvation. Dylan has cited the influence of Federico Fellini's movie La Strada on the song, while other commentators have found echoes of the poetry of Arthur Rimbaud. Author Howard Soans has identified the lyrics, quote, in the jingle jangle morning I'll come following you, end quote, as having been taken from a Lord Buckley recording. Bruce Langhorn, who performs guitar on the track, has been cited by Dylan as the inspiration for the tambourine man image in the song. Langhorn used to play a giant four inch deep tambourine, actually a Turkish frame drum, and had brought the instrument to a previous Dylan recording session. Other Dylan releases. The Bringing It All Back Home version of Mr. Tambourine Man was included on Bob Dylan's Greatest Hits in 1967, and several later Dylan compilation albums, including Biograph, Masterpieces, and The Essential Bob Dylan. The two June 1964 recordings, one with Ramblin' Jack Elliott and the other at Whitmark Music, have been released on the Bootleg Series Volume 7, No Direction Home, and the Bootleg Series Volume 9, The Whitmark Demos 1962 to 1964, respectively. Outtakes from the January 15, 1965 recording session 
were released on the Bootleg Series Volume 12, The Cutting Edge, 1965 to 1966, in 2015. The song has been in Dylan's live concert repertoire since it was written, usually as a solo acoustic song and live performances have appeared on various concert albums and DVDs. An early performance, perhaps the song's live debut, recorded at London's Royal Festival Hall on May 17, 1964, appeared on Live 1962-1966, rare performances from the copyright collections, while another early performance, recording during a song's workshop at the Newport Folk Festival on July 24, 1964, was included in both Murray Lerner's film, The Other Side of the Mirror, and the DVD release of Martin Scorsese's documentary, No Direction Home. A live performance at New York's Philharmonic Hall, dating from October 31, 1964, appeared on the Bootleg Series Volume 6, Bob Dylan Live 1964, concert at Philharmonic Hall. During his appearance at the Newport Folk Festival on July 25, 1965, after he was heckled by acoustic folk music fans during his electric set, Dylan returned to play acoustic versions of Mr. Tambourine Man and It's All Over Now, Baby Blue. His performance of Mr. Tambourine Man was included in The Other Side of the Mirror. A live version from Dylan's famous May 19, 1966 concert in Manchester, England, popularly but mistakenly known as the Royal Albert Hall Concert, was included on the Bootleg Series Volume 4, Bob Dylan Live 1966, the Royal Albert Hall Concert. Dylan's August 31st, 1969 performance of the song at the Isle of Wight Festival appeared on Isle of Wight Live, part of the 4-CD deluxe edition of the Bootleg Series Volume 10, Another Self-Portrait, 1969-1971. Dylan played the song as part of his evening set at the 1971 Concert for Bangladesh, organized by George Harrison and Ravi Shankar, featuring Harrison on electric guitar, Leon Russell on bass, and Ringo Starr on tambourine. That performance was included on the Concert for Bangladesh album, although it was excluded from the film of the concert. Another live version, from the Rolling Thunder Review Tour of 1975, was included on the Bootleg Series Volume 5, Bob Dylan Live 1975, The Rolling Thunder Review, and The Rolling Thunder Review, the 1975 live recordings, while electric band versions from 1978 and 1981 appeared, respectively, on Bob Dylan at Budokan and the deluxe edition of the Bootleg Series Volume 13, Trouble No More, 1979 to 1981. In November 2016, all Dylan's recorded live performances of the song from 1966 were released in the box set, the 1966 live recordings, with the May 26, 1966 performance released separately on the album The Real Royal Albert Hall 1966 Concert. The Birds' Version Release Mr. Tambourine Man was the debut single by the American band The Birds, and was released less than a month after Dylan's original on April 12, 1965, by Columbia Records. The song was also the title track of the band's debut album, which was released on June 21, 1965. The Birds' version is abridged and in a different key from Dylan's original. The single's success initiated the folk rock boom of 1965 and 1966, with a number of American and British acts imitating the band's hybrid of a rock beat, jangly guitar playing, and poetic or socially conscious lyrics. The single was the first folk rock smash hit, and gave rise to the term folk rock in the U.S. music press to describe the band's sound. This hybrid had its antecedents in the American folk revival of the early 1960s. The Animals' rock-oriented recording of the folk song The House of the Rising Sun the folk influences present in the songwriting of the Beatles, and the twelve-string guitar jangle of the Searchers and the Beatles' George Harrison. However, the success of the Birds' debut created a template for folk rock that proved successful for many acts during the mid-1960s. Conception Most of the members of the Birds had a background in folk music, since Jim McGuinn, Gene Clark, 
and David Crosby had all worked as folk singers during the early 1960s. They had all spent time, independently of each other, in various folk groups, including the New Christie Minstrels, the Limelighters, the Chad Mitchell Trio, and Les Baxter's Balladeers. In early 1964, McGuinn, Clark, and Crosby formed the Jet Set and started developing a fusion of folk-based lyrics and melodies with arrangements in the style of the Beatles. In August 1964, the band's manager, Jim Dixon, acquired an acetate disc of Mr. Tambourine Man from Dylan's publisher, featuring a performance by Dylan and Ramblin' Jack Elliott. Although the band members were initially unimpressed with the song, after McGuinn changed the time signature from Dylan's 2-4 configuration to 4-4 time, he began rehearsing and demoing it. In an attempt to make it sound more like the Beatles, the band and Dixon elected to give the song a full electric rock band treatment, effectively creating the musical subgenre of folk rock. To further bolster the group's confidence in the song, Dixon invited Dylan to a band rehearsal at World Pacific Studios to hear their rendition. Dylan was impressed, enthusiastically commenting, quote, Wow, you can dance to that, end quote. His endorsement erased any lingering doubts the band had about the song. During this period, drummer Michael Clark and bass player Chris Hillman joined, and the band changed their name to The Birds over Thanksgiving 1964. Band biographer Johnny Rogan has remarked that the two surviving demos of Mr. Tambourine Man, dating from this period, feature an incongruous marching band drum part from Clark but overall, the arrangement is very close to the later single version. Production The master take of Mr. Tambourine Man was recorded on January 20th, 1965 at Columbia Studios in Hollywood prior to the release of Dylan's own version. The song's jangling, melodic guitar playing, performed by Mick Quinn on a 12-string Rickenbacker guitar, was immediately influential and has remained so to the present day. The group's complex vocal harmony work, as featured on Mr. Tambourine Man, became another major characteristic of their sound. Due to producer Terry Melcher's initial lack of confidence in the Birds' musicianship, as a result of them not having gelled musically yet, Mick Gwynn was the only bird to play on both Mr. Tambourine Man and its B-side, I Knew I'd Want You. Rather than using band members, Melcher hired the Wrecking Crew, a collection of top L.A. session musicians who, with McGuinn on guitar, provided the backing track over which McGuinn, Crosby, and Clark sang. By the time that sessions for their debut album began in March 1965, Melcher was satisfied that the band was competent enough to record its own musical backing. Much of the track's arrangement and final mixdown was modeled after Brian Wilson's production work for the Beach Boys's Don't Worry Baby. The Birds' recording of the song opens with a distinctive Bach-inspired guitar introduction played by Mick Gwynn, and then, like Dylan's version, goes into the song's chorus. Although Dylan's version contains four verses, the Birds perform only the song's second verse in two repeats of the chorus, followed by a variation on the song's introduction, which then fades out. The Birds' arrangement of the song had been shortened during the band's rehearsals, at the suggestion of Jim Dixon in order to accommodate commercial radio stations, which were reluctant to play songs that weren't over two and a half minutes long. As a result, while Dylan's version is five and a half minutes long, the Birds' version runs just short of two and a half minutes. The lead vocal on the Birds' recording of Mr. Tambourine Man was sung by Mick Gwynn, who attempted to modify his singing style to fill what he perceived as a gap in the popular music scene of the day somewhere between the vocal sound of John Lennon and Bob Dylan. The song also took on a spiritual aspect for Mick Gwynn during the recording session. As he told Rogan in 1997, quote, I was singing to God, and I was saying that God was the tambourine man, and I was saying to him, Hey God, take me for a trip, and I'll follow you. It was a prayer of submission, End quote. Reception the single reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 
and number one on the UK Singles Chart, making it the first recording of a Dylan song to reach number one on any pop music chart. In 2009, the band's bassist Chris Hillman gave Bob Eubanks, a DJ on KRLA, and later the host of The Newlywed Game, credit for originally breaking the song on the radio in LA. Upon release, Record World picked it as its sleeper of the week and called it a, quote, funky and slow treatment of the Bob Dylan tune that has a lot to say, moody and different treatment from a group going places, end quote. Band biographer Christopher Hjort has remarked that it is surprising that neither Billboard or Cashbox magazines reviewed the single, considering the efforts Columbia put into promoting the record. In the UK, Record Mirror described the single as, quote, a Bob Dylan song of uncommon charm. Group is American, folksy, and five strong. Busy mandolin style backing. Song is the big selling point for sure, end quote. In his review for Music Echo, critic Brian Harvey described it as, quote, a folksy guitar twangy medium tempo swinger. It's a busy number with lots of echo. Lead voice tells the story and has vocal group backing in the attractive chorus. The melody sticks even after one play, end quote. Critic William Rollman has argued that in the wake of Mr. Tambourine Man, the influence of the birds could be heard in recordings by a number of other Los Angeles-based acts, including The Turtles, The Leaves, Barry McGuire, and Sonny and Cher. In addition, author and music historian Richie Unterberger sees the influence of the birds in recordings by The Love and Spoonful, The Mamas and the Papas, Simon and Garfunkel, and Love. While author John Einerson has said that both The Grassroots and We Five enjoyed commercial success by emulating the Birds' folk rock sound. Unterberger also feels that, by late 1965, the Beatles were assimilating the sound of the Birds into their Rubber Soul album, most notably on the songs Nowhere Man and If I Needed Someone. Both Unterberger and author Peter Lovazzoli have commented that Dylan himself decided to record with electric instrumentation on his 1965 album, Bringing It All Back Home, in part due to the influence of the Birds' rock adaptation of Mr. Tambourine Man. As the 1960s came to a close, folk rock changed and evolved away from the jangly template pioneered by the Birds. But, Unterberger argues, that the band's influence could still be heard in the music of Fairport Convention. Since the 1960s, the Birds' jangly folk rock sound has continued to influence popular music, with authors such as Chris Smith, Johnny Rogan, and Mark Deming noting the band's influence on various acts, including Big Star, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, R.E.M., The Long Riders, The Smiths, The Bangles, The Stone Roses, Teenage Fan Club, and The Laws. In addition to appearing on the Birds' debut album, Mr. Tambourine Man is included on several Birds' compilation and live albums, including The Birds' Greatest Hits, Live at Royal Albert Hall 1971, The Very Best of the Birds, The Essential Birds, The Birds Play Dylan, and the live disc of the Birds' untitled album. The Birds' version of the song appears on compilation albums that include hit songs by multiple artists. Two earlier demo recordings of Mr. Tambourine Man, dating from the World Pacific rehearsal sessions, can be heard on the Birds' archival albums, Pre-Flight, In the Beginning, and the Pre-Flight Sessions. Charts Weekly Charts Weekly Chart Performance for Mr. Tambourine Man, 1965 Canada, RPM Top Singles, Peak Position 2 Ireland, IRMA, Peak Position 1 Finland, Selman, Viralinen, Peak Position 10 South Africa, Springbok Radio, Peak Position 1 UK, Record Retailer, Peak Position 1 U.S. Billboard Hot 100, Peak Position 1, and U.S. Cashbox Top 100, 
Peak Position 1 Year End Charts Year End Chart Performance for Mr. Tambourine Man, 1965 South Africa, Rank 14 U.S. Billboard Hot 100, Rank 25 and U.S. Cash Box, Rank 26 Certifications Certifications and Sales for Mr. Tambourine Man Region United Kingdom, BPI, Bob Dylan version, certified silver, with over 200,000 certified units slash sales. Region, United Kingdom, BPI, the birds version, also certified silver, with over 200,000 certified units slash sales. Other recordings. Mr. Tambourine Man has been performed and recorded by many artists and in different languages over the years including at least 13 versions, recorded in 1965 alone. The Brothers Four recorded a commercial version before The Birds, but were unable to release it due to licensing issues. Odetta included her version of the song on her album, Odetta Sings Dylan, released early March 1965. Notable recordings of the song have been made by Judy Collins, Stevie Wonder, The Four Seasons, The Barbarians, and Chad and Jeremy. Other artists who have recorded the song include Glenn Campbell in 1965, The Bo Brummels in 1966, The Letterman in 1966, Kenny Rankin in 1967, Melanie in 1968, Joni Mitchell in 1970, Jean Clark in 1984, and Crowded House in 1989. William Shatner recorded a spoken word cover of the song for his 1968 album, The Transformed Man. A reunited lineup of the birds featuring Roger McGuinn, Chris Hillman, and David Crosby performed Mr. Tambourine Man with Dylan at a Roy Orbison tribute concert on February 24, 1990. This live performance of the song was included on the 1990 box set, The Birds. At the October 1992 Bob Dylan 30th Anniversary Tribute Concert at Madison Square Garden, Mick Gwynn performed the song, backed by Tom Petty, Mike Campbell, and Benmont Trench, among others. In Creative Works Mr. Tambourine Man has been referenced in books and film, including Tom Wolfe's nonfiction novel The Electric Kool-Aid Acid Test, Stephen King's novel Carrie, the film Dangerous Minds, and the documentary film Gonzo, the life and work of Dr. Hunter S. Thompson. The subject of the latter film, journalist Hunter S. Thompson, had Mr. Tamarine Man played at his funeral and dedicated his novel Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas to Dylan and the song. Anne Hui's 1990 film Song of the Exile begins with Maggie Chung riding a bicycle through the streets of London while a street performer plays the song. The 2013 John Craigie song, I Wrote Mr. Tambourine Man, is about a person that Craigie met in New Orleans who claimed to have written the original lyrics to Mr. Tambourine Man. Legacy The Birds' version of Mr. Tambourine Man was listed as the number 79 song on Rolling Stone's list of the 500 greatest songs of all time and Dylan's version was ranked number 106. It is one of three songs to place twice, along with Walk This Way by both Aerosmith and Run DMC with Perry and Tyler, and Blue Suede Shoes by both Carl Perkins and Elvis Presley. The Birds' version was honored with a Grammy Hall of Fame award in 1998, and Dylan's version was honored with the same award in 2002. In 1989, Rolling Stone ranked The Birds' version of Mr. Tambourine Man as the number 86 single of the prior 25 years. That same year, music critic Dave Marsh listed it as number 207 in his list of the top 1001 singles ever made. In 1990, National Public Radio in the United States listed this version as one of the 300 most important American records of the 20th century. In the UK, music critic Colin Larkin listed the Birds' version 
as the number one single of all time. Other UK publishers that have listed this song as one of the top songs or singles include Mojo, New Musical Express, and Sounds. Australian music critic Toby Cresswell included the song in his book 1001 Songs, The Great Songs of All Time and the Artists, Stories and Secrets Behind Them. In a 2005 reader's poll reported in Mojo, Dylan's version of Mr. Tambourine Man was listed as the number four all-time greatest Bob Dylan song, and a similar poll of artists ranked the song at number 14. In 2002, Uncut listed it as the number 15 all-time Dylan song. And with that, we conclude this week's episode on Mr. Tambourine Man. I hope you all enjoyed it very much, and thank you for tuning in to Wiki Whisperer Articles Aloud. If you have any suggestions on how I could improve my recording, if you would like to request an article for me to read next week, or if you would simply like to send me some words of encouragement, please feel free to do so by emailing me at wikiwhisperer at gmail.com. That is spelled W-I-K-I-W-H-I-S-P. E-R-E-R at gmail.com. All information used in this podcast can be found at wikipedia.com and is available for fair use under the Creative Commons license. I have been your host, Adrian Carell, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. <laughs>